You ready? Okay, hi, my name's Steve, and I got myself a free Samsung uh, TV a couple weeks ago, hoping to fix it, and I uh, browsed the web. There's tons of excellent YouTube videos, excellent information. I'm an, I, I'm an IT guy, electronics guy, so I thought it would be an easy fix. And so far, I haven't been able to fix it. Um, I've replaced out the most common part, the, uh, this guy. I actually bought a replacement uh, uh, donor TV that has an identical part like this. This is called the inverter power board or power supply inverter board. And it's not it, which uh, isn't surprising. Um, I don't know, I'll tell you the model number of the TV on the YouTube video. It doesn't really matter. Um, I wanted to continue to work on it and continue to fix it. And I found some excellent videos out there that suggests that it might not just be this. It might be um, the compact fluorescent tubes themselves, or the lights themselves. They might get a little old and start drawing excessive amounts of current. And it's not that obvious. I saw it only in comments on, uh, on YouTube. And I actually haven't found any videos on how to disassemble the TV down to that level. So. I'm doing both at the same time. I'm going to disassemble this TV to that level to change out those tubes if necessary with the, the donor TV that I have, document the process, and maybe wind up with a working TV in the end. Is it worth it? This stuff shouldn't really wind up in the landfill if, if it just takes a little bit of effort to, uh, to keep them alive. So that's the whole point. So that's the general intro. Let me show you what the symptoms are like in a sec. I'm going to turn off the lights here, and light behind, excuse me, hope I have everything set up. I've got the power, I've got it plugged into a uh, power bar, so I'm just going to uh, turn the power bar on. You'll hear a startup sound, and keep your eye on the screen. It may not be that obvious on this particular video, but I have other ways of showing it. So the device does power on, <laughs> I think, what did I do? Yep. Okay, sorry about that, here it comes, startup sound, a little bit of light, and then it goes out. Now that's, that's pretty hard to see on your screen, so I will repeat the process. It, it's still on, by the way. I think you can, no, you can't see it, but it, it is fired up, but I, I am still measuring current. It's just that, the, for whatever reason, the inverter seems to have shut down. And I'm hoping I know why. I'm going to turn it sideways. I'm going to turn it off with the power bar. You can actually see here uh, a little bit of red light around that, that fancy um, audio thingy. Let's pull back. I'm going to turn it off. And do you remember where that light is? That big hole right there. I'm going to turn. Here, pull back for a second. We're going to look through this hole here. You can also see it up top. I'll, I'll pull the back off in a second. If we turn it on, wait for the startup sound. <clears throat> Hopefully you'll see it this way. Here comes the backlight. Oh, I don't see it on the screen there. Let's do it the real way, which is, let's, let's get a, an out shot of the back cover here. Um, if, if you were not in a dark basement like us, looking down here, looking through this hole, you'll actually see the, the, the brightness of the, uh, the inverter coming on, the bulbs turning on, and then going out after a second. But the, the unit is still on. Um, I've already taken the liberty of uh, disconnecting all of the, these screws, but if you choose to do it yourself, there's a, there's a bunch of screws. Take your time. You'll have a, quite a few of a handful. They're all similar. And these four here, be careful with, because when you take those out, the entire stand is no longer attached to the rest of the TV frame. And after you get the, all of that out, oh yeah, don't forget, there's, there may be one hidden around here on this, this main board. And I've glued it nicely together, or I pushed it back together nicely, so it might give me a second to pop this off. And there you go. That's... Let's hide this somewhere safe. And it's really a lot of space for a 40 inch TF. I imagine the bigger guys are even much more space inside of them. 
that's the inverter I've already swapped out. And uh, we'll get into the other boards in a second. Let's turn the light out again. And you can shine that TV, uh, that camera anywhere. We'll see the symptom here. I got it correct. Here it comes. Oh, oh power bar's off. Here we go. couple of seconds and it's out that's pretty obvious you saw that there so the plan is to uh, to fix it we'll get into the how in a second as you know this particular TV appears to be working the inverter power is supplying power to the main board it turns on but it shuts off pretty quickly after that um, a lot of people recommend this inverter power supply board, uh, inverter backlight board, whatever its official name is, um, and that seems to solve it. I've already substituted it out with a, with a known working TV, and that particular known working TV just has a busted LCD. So that TV fires up just fine. So I'm, I'm pretty certain this board and this board are in good shape. Now, uh, as I said earlier in the introduction, the, there are tubes that we're going to see soon that go traverse across this entire TV, quite a few of these tubes. And they, over time, as from what I understand, can get um, they age, and they can start to become more conductive. And that conductivity increase might increase the amount of current that these, uh, this high-voltage uh, inverter system is supplying, and it might be shutting down. I'm hoping it's shutting down because of that. I took the liberty, actually, of taking... Um, some of the components off of, uh, of another TV and I will get down to that level. The, the plan here is to essentially remove uh, all of the critical boards very carefully is to pay a lot of attention to these, these cables. There's a, a lot of conductors inside of them so be very gentle with, with the disassembly. We'll go over those one board at a time and then over a couple of days period we're going to actually disassemble and remove the entire LCD panel, carefully taking out all the layers. It's, it's kind of a big job uh, to get down to uh, seeing and pulling out, if necessary, the actual CFFL bolts. Um, and we have a donor machine here. I'm hoping that they're the same specifications. They're the same width, for sure. And maybe we'll have a working TV when we're done. Before you begin, I want you to note what you've done here by disassembling it to this level. There's nothing holding the entire screen on this stand, okay? It's just floating there. So be really careful. You pick it up, it's, the stand's going to not be there anymore. So just be cautious. You can still use it to hold it, and it'll still turn a little bit, but it, there's nothing holding it in place. So be really cautious. So I'm going to, my, my Nexus phone is almost dead, so I'm going to run down what I'm about to do. It's not rocket science. There are five screws on the inverter power supply board. One here, two, three, four, five. A couple of them are out right now. And this, this one connector. This connector, be careful, it's got a little tabby thing. You'll figure it out. Push it, open it up. You can just leave it hanging for now. And once the screws are out of place, this board just slide it out to the left. There, you'll see that these uh, actual conduct, uh, connectors fall into these slots here. There's a, there's a bunch of them. Just carefully slide that out to the left. Over here, it will you'll have some variation. If this is a Samsung TV, this is sort of the main board. And it has the same connector here. Careful, careful. This guy here is very sensitive. Be very careful with this connector. You just squeeze here and, and pull it out. I'll do that right now. Just take your time. Uh, there's a couple of uh, boards here. One's for the a few boards on the front of the TV. One for the uh, control and buttons and stuff like that. And this guy here is for the um, the speakers. So you may need to pull this tape away and pull these connectors out. Take the boards out very carefully and hide them. Might not be a bad idea to remove this one too. We'll eventually get to that later on. So I'll come back to this TV a little more stripped down in a couple of minutes. So, um, I kind of rushed that last part. I just wanted to make sure 
Uh, I've removed the screws for the, the main board and taken that board away. That comes apart kind of nicely. It's, it's pretty easy. Um, I've removed the cable and the screws for this guy, like that. Careful, there's a little push tabby thing here. Um, now, as I mentioned before, I found that this sometimes doesn't slide out completely. It needs a little bit of coaxing because it's actually got quite a few pins that it's going into this black in here. Even now, it's a little, it's a little bit sticky for me. So I'm just gonna <laughs> rock it gently. Oh, there it goes. You can see each of these little guys actually falls into a into a slot. There's a whole bunch of uh, connectors. Each of those is a is an actual connector. And they made up pretty tightly. So just be careful with that guy as you're pulling it out. Put it somewhere safe. Um, and uh, next, I'm going to actually lift this entire TV up off of the stand and then lay it down and then move on for the, the next part, which is eventually isolating out the, uh, the LCD panel in the back. So that will be the next part. Cool. You ready? Yeah. Okay, action shot. I am going to try to do this solo. I'm just going to pick it up. You can see how it's not attached. And I have to move. I'll be really careful. I don't rough. Hope I'm not doing anything bad here. I don't really trust. I don't know if I'm dropping it on the speaker for the sake. Please. So if my photographer can just simply move the stand away. Thank you. And it would be awesome if you can lay out that uh, that towel. I, I might actually... Right. Hmm. Okay. And then the panel. Lay it down. Make sure... Make sure the panel surface is not touching directly on anything because you'll scratch it or break it. It doesn't take much force to break it. Um, so now what's going to happen is I'm going to take off quite a few screws here. These guys are involved in holding down this, this clamp here. We're going to be really careful with this, this board here and, and I'll tell you about that in a second. We're going to take off that screw. Let's see. There are two people, two guys up here, two girls and guys up there, and I'll get back to you in a sec after I remove any of those. Alright, so I haven't taken the T-Con board off. I don't think it's necessary. I'm going to definitely take the connectors off later. Um, I have removed this heavy bracket. And uh, there are different colored screws, so we'll take note of which ones go where. Um, and I've done the, the removal of all of the different the different screws around. And if you're very careful, you'll notice that um, this entire panel can now separate from from the boards on, on both sides. There's, there's four kind of uh, uh, centering pins, I guess. Now, my photographer is going to from the back. This is probably better as a two-person job, but I'm going to do it as a one-person job. I'm just going to walk my hands up and carefully pull out the panel. So if you've done a good job so far, you haven't scratched it or dropped it, and this is the meat and potatoes of the panel with the, um, the back legs in. And I'll just clean this up and we'll continue on with the project. Okay, you can pause it. Okay, so this is the part where you got to start being really, really careful. You should have been careful the whole time, but now there's no room for mistake. This always has been. This In this TV, there's no protective layer. This is the, the, the LCD panel and its cover and everything. There's, there's really no glass here, so you got to be careful. You don't want to drop a screwdriver or uh, have your cat land on it or something like that. It's a perfect landing platform for a cat with claws. Um, there are several screws that we're going to take out here. These guys here, all the way around, is a smaller uh, Phillips head, and uh, that's going to remove uh, this little metal plate on the outside. I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, 
Um, on this TV, I didn't notice this on the first one I took apart, but on this TV, there's a some metal tape keeping this bracket from coming off, so I'm just carefully peeling it away. It, it, it's metal. It might actually be a grounding strap, so I'm not going to destroy it. I'll just tuck it away. Nice video work there. All right, action shot. Off, off she comes. It's pretty thin sheet metal. You don't want to bend that and, and damage it. So put it on your increasingly large pile of parts. Now, don't be silly and think that you can do this. And Well, you might be able to do it in one night if you've done it a few times. But you're going to wind up with a boatload of parts. Tuck them away smartly. You know, you'll make somebody manage. So we're getting close to lifting the actual panel away, and there's some really funky kind of connectors here. I, I don't know the name of them, but they're notorious for breaking. They're almost they're almost a pain in the butt. I, I guess they're low profile cables, cable connectors, and uh, they come off. Don't use a screwdriver. Uh, you've got to be really careful with them. I'm just going to use my the fingertip if you have some uh, nail left. Hopefully I can do it right. See that nice little click sound? That's it. It's out. You can do it on the other side. Carefully. Don't use a screwdriver. You don't need that much force. It's nice and open now. Putting them in, we'll probably do it in the opposite side. We'll, we'll, we'll do it nicely uh, later on. It just pop out very carefully. And just be gentle with that connector. All right, so the, all the signaling for the LCD, as I understand it, is coming from these two boards that were driven by the T-Con board. Remember that fancy connector there? So just, they're not held down in any, any fashion. Just pick them up so they're out of the way. There, carefully. And now I've got to get the whole panel out of there. I think this is the right time to do it. It, it can, it's possible to get this black frame out and hold it in place, but I, I didn't find it to be all that easy that way. So I'm just going to carefully, hopefully not break it, uh, remove out the panel. So this is it. This is your panel. You definitely don't want to drop that, scratch it or anything. Do this with an intention of having a safe place to put it when you're, when you're done. Uh, string that's been here all this time. Um, I I just thought of, that's the second time I pulled the panel apart to that level. Maybe gloves would have been a good idea um, to prevent uh, fingerprints and stuff. I, I hope I can wash the back side and the front side. I, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be okay. We're getting very close um, <laughs> to the total to bolts. Um, next there's no screws necessary. There are a bunch of clips here holding this guy, uh, holding this uh, this black frame in place. There's clips all around. So I'm just going to carefully get my my fingers in there. I just cut my nails, so it's a little more painful than usual. Ow. Maybe my photographer will help me once I take this away. Just one at a time, no forcing it. I had to use a screwdriver for one. You may not have to. Just gentle prying of plastic. And oops. Okay. I think the orientation is something you don't want to mix up. Luckily there's a notch at the top that lines up. Um, it, it's symmetrical, so uh, yeah, you can't get that backwards. And add it to your increasingly large pile of parts. And now we're down to what looks like a diffuser. A whole bunch of layers are actually here. And um, I'll show you those in the next chapter.
So this is kind of neat. There's a, there's several layers here. There's one. Are you are you recording? Uh, one, two. Hopefully this isn't a poisonous. Two, three, four. I may have skipped one there. Four layers, which is amazing. Like a diffuser, and then I have no idea, some kind of a protective layer maybe, and then another interesting. I didn't read up on it. It's uh, somebody else designed it, and it works. So there's no point in reinventing the wheel. All right, so I know this isn't a clean room, but we're going to do it anyway. I'm going to try to pull, I hope I have all the layers there. Do I? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. I'm just going to pull up all of the layers together, try not to make a mess, and I'm just going to put them all together right here for now. Move it somewhere safe. Try not to get them covered in too much stuff. All right. Now, this is what all the work was to get to. And this is the first time I've ever seen it. Interesting. Okay, so this is the second time I've... This is, this is the meat and potatoes. I keep saying meat and potatoes. Hungry. This is, the meat, this is the meat and potatoes of the lighting system. These are actually compact fluorescents. Uh, CFFLs, compact fluorescent, I don't know, I can't remember the full acronym. Um, and this is that's the reason why I say it's the second time I've taken it apart because uh, the, the broken TV that I was playing around with to, to learn about this, uh, it doesn't look this messy. This, as you can see, uh, uh, I'm not too sure if they're all this black on the ends. and. I don't know if that that's that's not good that's a crack um, they look a little like heated I don't know if that's normal maybe distorted a bit and then on the other side um, same kind of thing it's quite a bit of distortion and it's black as well Ugh. I don't know if this is normal um, I don't recall the other one looking this bad but maybe I'm hoping that uh, now that we've gotten to this level and we'll um, have a look at the, the other similar TV, maybe these CFFL bulbs are compatible between the two TVs. I'm, I'm assuming they are. And we're going to carefully uh, get to the point where we can swap these out and cross our fingers that that um, these old bulbs and the increase in conductivity because they're so old was the ultimate problem for overcurrent and shutting down. So, crossing fingers. Counter going up? Yeah. Okay. So here we are, day two. Um, we left last time with the bulbs um, in bad shape. And I have here uh, the bad bulbs. If you want to show here, I have a new photographer who's just learning her job. There's, there's the potentially bad bulbs, if you can see how dark they are. This is just a reminder that we think there's probably some heat damage. You can see that there's a little bit of evidence of, of heat. In fact, yesterday I was experimenting with the potential of removing some of these bulbs, which I still don't know how to do it properly. And, and we if you see, wow, that cracked like insanely easy. Um, I imagine we could use a donor to get this whole connector off. Um, but I do have a donor board, and a donor entire TV, which is over here. It's not the exact same model, watch you don't trip. Mm -hmm. But if you notice, this, this TV did work. The LCD was damaged. Uh, very damaged in a move, but this TV still turns on. The backlight still turns on to full power. And you can see here that there's not a lot of black. There's definitely not a lot of um, heat distortion on the plastic. There's no cracks on both sides. I think this back panel, is, well, it's obviously in way better shape than that one. Um, I, I think it'd be silly to take all of these individual tubes out and put them into the old back panel when 
there's a possibility that this is exactly compatible with um, with the old unit. Um, here are, for example, the outer plastic casing, which looks identical. The this little sheet metal thing, which has an exact part number on it, that are identical. Um, I looked around on the back of this thing to try to find evidence of a part number. There's a there's a human made stamp that's stuck on it that is different, but side for side everything looks identical. Um, the only thing that I'm going to have to, to obviously change out is the TCON board. The TCON board on um, the one I got on Kijiji or the K for Kijiji, remind me of where I got this. The TCON board is different. Um, however, I, I carefully looked at all the mounting holes for all of the boards. They, they, they look identical. I'm going to be I'm going to take the lazy road and I'm going to um, assume that this is compatible with the, the TV that I first started with and um, we'll check back in a few minutes if that's the truth. Hmm? Done? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I ran, uh, I lost my photographer so I have to do it this way. Um, when I first took this panel apart I, I made the mistake of pulling this connector board out there's a bunch of screws here um, and I pulled and nothing broke but what the result of that is is that each of these bulbs plugs into a socket on the other side so it's not a big deal if you chose to pull that out you don't necessarily need to 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 do this swap that I've done but if it did, um, in pushing this connector back down and pushing this and screwing it back into place, you do at the same time have to come over to the other side and carefully push down so that the tubes themselves fall into the socket on the other side. You'll see what I mean if you do. Um, you don't necessarily have to take that uh, socket out, but if you accidentally do, it's not a huge deal. So, I have the... Um, the working tube backing um, ready to go. I've put the the uh, TCON board from the original TV on this, and it, it, the the line told this or there's lineup holes perfectly labeled. Perfectly, <laughs> sorry, let me say that again. There are holes ready to go, so it's uh, it, it it was easily adaptable. I did obviously the board and the uh, the metal bracket went over. I carefully removed the uh, connector. The connectors themselves are the same as well, uh, but just in case, I'm going to keep the connectors persistent. I've removed them for now. I'm ready now to carefully put back on the diffusers and all the different layers. And uh, I think I'm going to do a little bit of um, work. Here's the, here's the diffusers and all the layers. I think I'll be really careful to um, get rid of any dust with um, maybe a little Swiffer thing or I'm not too sure what exactly but uh, I don't want any dust to be stuck um, on the backing or between any of the layers it'll be very visible uh, with with the lighting assuming this thing actually works and I'll get back to you in a sec okay so my photographer handed me some lint-free cloths and I put um, the first of the four layers, the one that's on the farthest downside, um, that was exposed to potential dust. The, the other layers um, weren't, they were sandwiched in between this whole time so I, uh, I simply uh, got rid of the dust on the lowest layer and then obviously on the top most layer uh, after I placed everything down. Uh, I don't know if you will be able to see it. it uh, I'm assuming I got them all. We'll find out soon enough. So now would be a good time to clean the, here's the uh, LCD. This is the side that's going to be going down. I've placed the T-Con connectors towards me because I'm going to be putting the connectors on and if you remember these flippy guys um, this is going to be downward so the T-Cons connect there so this is the this is the bottom side so now's a chance to 
clean it as best as you can. I, I hope just buffing it with um, a lint-free cloth isn't a bad thing. Um, and I'm also going to use a lint-free cloth um, as, as handles just so that I can grip the outer edges here of this before I place it on top um, and not leave any fingerprints on the bottom side. So I think fingerprints are going to be important. I'll be able to clean the other side quite easily. It's going to be visible um, to, for the, a lot of it for the entire time the TV is exposed. But for, um, but for this, this side here, we're going to have to do the best, our best job we can to eliminate any dust and, and fingerprints before uh, it's put into the TV, hopefully forever. Duh, silly me. I have to first put the uh, black outer frame down. I may not have to, but I... Uh, yeah, I have to. Yeah, right. First, <laughs> the black outer frame, and then the LCD panel. Let's do that first. So the outer plastic edgy thing is down, and now we're ready to try to lay out the LCD panel. Here we go. Filming? Mm -hmm. All right, so the, the panel's on. I put these little these, uh, board in, uh, held them in the area where the clips are. Um, we're ready now to uh, put the, the T-Con connectors in. And if you remember, those, are, those came out in a funny way, um, and they're going to go in in a funny way. They're the most, I find they're the most sensitive connector on this whole thing. So there's a lot of material um, that connector surface area, that's the metal connector surface, you want to try to get it up as high as you can when you push this into place. Whoops, let me do that with, with thumbs here. So get that in like that. We'll do this twice. See, it's going in. I hope you see that well on the screen. No, you don't have to get too close. It might not be focusing. It is? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Ah. Now I seem to be having difficulty getting it in. There, that that looks pretty good. And then gently push down on that connector. And I don't feel it snapping. Oh, that wasn't a snapping sound. That was the thing up there. I didn't hear a snapping sound. And you know what? It, it's not even tight yet. I can see it's not down yet. So let's start that again. Yeah, it's... <laughs> No comments from the peanut gallery. <laughs> Let's do that again. Did I get it right? This is not an easy connector. I don't know who designed this thing. They should be. They should be, have to change them all. You should design one. It's a nice low profile connector, but it's really hard to put in place. And I've seen these in all kinds of other boards too. Oh man, this is tough. Is there an easier way? <laughs> I can, but am I doing anything wrong here? Maybe it has to come down a bit and then in. Ay ay ay. Ay 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 ay. There's a little bit of a thing I can hang, push on here, a little clip. A little uh, X thing I can put my. Oh, did you see that? And I see no line, which is nice. See the way there's no line? Let's do it again over here. My photographer friend is helping out, taking time away from her studying. Studying for her grade nine exam. Shh. Shh. Quiet on the <laughs> Giving away who that person might be. <gasps> oh, there. It feels kind of funny when it's closing. It feels like it's going to break. But it's nice and tight. I don't see any line there. Uh, I pull it gently. It doesn't move. I think we're good to go. Thank you for your help. We're getting one step closer to time. Now we're uh, going to... Are you still recording? Yeah. Now we're going to put this bracket down and screw it in place. And we're almost ready to test it out and see if we have a functional TV. Nice. Thank you.
Okay, I've lost my photographers again. If you remember <clears throat> that um, tape that came off of the disassembly of this TV, um, I'm assuming it's conductive tape, and that there, uh, the reason for it being there, I'm, I'm going to, I, I made sure I put it back in both places over here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the, uh, the correct um, front panel, lay it face down, um, on the table here and then lay the panel uh, in its place. Silly me, you can tell I'm a newbie at this. This is my first time. I, I think it'd be wise to first put on the uh, bracket that goes above the T-Con um, as well as um, holds the TV up. This is the main part of the frame. Um, so I'm going to put that in place and screw it, put it down for a sec, put that in place and screw it just in case I run into trouble trying to uh, mount the, the final outer case uh, to it. So do that first. All right, so that's what she looks like with the speaker, outer shell, front shell. Uh, lay, I laid it down first, and then uh, this this panel getting heavier <laughs> actually as as we add stuff to it. Uh, it's it might be a two-person job unless you're pretty strong and take your time. Just make sure your notches line up because you you are laying the panel down uh, with the uh, unprotected surface going down. So just be cautious with that. And uh, let's get the brackets in place carefully and uh, make sure you don't have too many screws left over and I'm getting one step closer. Okay, so this is the part where screw color and screw type <laughs> messes up. So far I've, I've got uh, four of these clippies. Uh, where's the other two? Three and four holding the uh, panel onto the front screen, the front, uh, the front plasticky part here. Um, I've carefully made sure I've mounted these four. There's, there's a couple of black ones that I've mounted there. Um, and then this finally can sit and start looking like a TV. It's, it's sitting in their frame. Now, uh, we're one step closer. We're, now I'm going to throw um, the, the boards onto, onto this unit and uh, plug them in carefully and we're ready to try a power test. Crossing fingers! I have my pink knee pads down to save my knees while I do this final review. I'm just sort of taking my time dressing the cables. I've mounted the main board. I've mounted the power supply inverted board carefully. I'm putting the cables back in place and then taping them down. This, the tape comes off kind of hardcore, but it works. So just take your time. Everything's got a place. Hopefully remember how it came apart. Just review the videos. Just, just be gentle. And this tapey thing. Oh, this stuff is so sticky. But it's not a bad idea to reuse the tape if you can. Or get some more of this stuff. I'm just going to pop that up. Clear through there. I think that's what I had going before. So the speaker, left speaker, right speaker are still connected. The, the front panel connector. So there's really four going here to the uh, T-Con board and then the power in board from the inverter power supply board. And it, went, it sure went back together fast, didn't it? So now, this is the time where we warn the family and we say fire in the hole. So I've got it on a power bar. It would be smart to put it on a, um, like you, you can hook it up, you can put it through a lamp. If you know what you're doing, you can put the power through a lamp and the lamp will control the amount of current flow. I, I'm just going to be a crazy man and wing it. 
So power bar is off, so there's no power going to that yet. I'm going to plug it in. And what do you think is going to happen? It's going to work. It's going to work? I'm going to stand over here just in case. Staying on. What does it look like on the front? Sweet. <laughs> it actually worked. You've done it. So You're a genius. I see a lot of white spots in there. I hope I didn't make any mistakes. Let's turn it around and hook it up to a signal and see what happens. All right. So far it's working, man. It, we haven't really got any test patterns or anything like that. And it's only been on for a few minutes, but and hey, let's just see uh, how long it lasts and, and if we hopefully don't have to take it apart and do any uh, playing around. There, there is apparently a test mode. I saw some of the professionals in the shop going through a self-menu test mode thing. And so maybe if, if our photographer can Google that. There might be a magical key sequence we can get into to a test mode. And there's, I'm assuming, a bunch of test patterns to, uh, to validate um, the LCD and the tube and all that kind of stuff. But in the meantime, I'm going to muck around with uh, what we just did. We just put a USB key in there. Uh, I've never used a device like this, so I'm going to take a while to figure out how to browse to it. Yeah, there's a couple of funny artifacts up at the top. Now's the time to look for a little fingerprint that I might have left behind. Or... Yeah, I kind of screwed a few places up. Are you recording? Mm-hmm. But is it worth taking it apart again? Look at the graph. Uh, select is continue. Sorry, I put the controller down. Right here. There we go. Here it is. Select start new journey. Uh, select. Well, it looks like someone's looks been great. Playing. I have no idea how to play this. I'm not even playing right now, but that looks pretty impressive, man. <laughs> For free. Hey, man. This is me. I got my new TV. Hello, everyone. Wow. And we haven't even started looking around with the settings. I'm sure there's all kinds of resolutions and backlight adjustments and calibrations and we're not even running the latest firmware so we're good to go man I think uh, I think we fixed it for now we'll just uh, monitor the current right now it is before we sign off the uh, I have a power watt meter thing in here and it I gotta pull this out it's currently drawing 1.6 amps it peaked at almost 1 point, uh, over 1.8 amps, which is not much. It's currently consuming 192 watts of power, which is so much. Well, so much for if you're a geek. It peaked at 212 watts. Wow. And, uh, that is. So, let's hope it doesn't uh, overheat too quickly. Not that high yet. And uh, let's hope it works for the rest of its lifetime.